So I just wanted to show you that uh, I've got the gearbox on the stand dropping the car down to match it because I haven't got that much height but what I've done is, uh, which really helps, is lift up the engine at the front I put a rubber ball on the porter power and tip the engine back and that's almost parallel but <coughs> when I look at it I don't think the bolt holes are sort of, it needs twisting a little bit if you see what I mean so you know it, it really saves breaking your back lifting these gearboxes up because they are heavy now one thing you've got to make sure of all the wires are out of the way tie them up if you're not sure but let's get this uh, wiggled in uh, it shouldn't take too long but when you're doing this always remember keep a couple of bolts in your pocket and remember you know like a nut ready to put back in because there's nothing worse than getting underneath getting it all lined up then you forgot the bolts right let's get on with it so the transmission went in like a dream didn't even break into a sweat I'm going to show you the uh, transmission jack and you might be able to get a few ideas to make something of your own uh, the next thing, the light's pretty bad here, I'm going to move that light back a bit put the hand, the uh, speedo cable on then the handbrake, but first of all to make life safe we're going to put the cross member back in and uh, so that means using the porter power which I've dropped from the front that's all done now and everything should just like nuts and bolts back up again I've got to redo the handbrake again because the shoes are well they're all oily and I'm going to see if I've got a set of shoes in fact there's the handbrake there look so I'm going to uh, sort that out but uh, yeah that support bar worked out really good that's the first time I've used it you can just to say see the strap there but that's kept it up and allowed me to get the frame out so I can put the cross member back in I don't know why I never did it years ago oh well let's get this bolted up I thought we'd have a quick look at my uh, gearbox jack this is it here now, whose make it is? I don't know. I bought it for a uh, hundred bucks from my uh, guy who repairs all my hydraulic equipment in Sherbrooke. Somebody brought it in for repairs and never collected it. But it's a quite a good design for a little, for a flaw. Because in an ideal world, I would like a, a single piston uh, jack that lifts up to lift the transmissions out. Unfortunately, I haven't got enough height to get one of those in, even the smallest one was too tall but I bought this and I found out it was even better now I obviously haven't got much experience of garage jacks because I've never had a lift for a long time but this is quite good if you look at the uh, minute, it's got quite a, a, a long base and it's wide so it's stable that's the nice thing it's not gonna it's a bit chunky but it, it it's stable it's not going to tip over you'd have to have a real difficult job to tip it over um, it's got some nice trays at the bottom here where you can put your spanners and your nuts and bolts in so they're not getting dragged underneath but what I liked about it was it had these slots in here so you could actually put different adapters on the top and this is what I made I made this little box to get the height because I needed height with my lift but when I dropped it down I needed it to be low enough to get from under the car with the, with the R380 on because the gear stick sticks out a little bit too far so that was a compromise and then I made these adapters to go on the top now this one's for an R380 and you can see how, how I've modified it here to go around the cross member so I could put the bolts in now in the video we recently did I made a, a bracket to hold the gearbox up so I didn't need this feature here so that was a good thing and like I say I made it a, like a universal mounting on here so I can then put the uh, if I want to just take a transfer case off I can just bolt it onto here and bolt the transfer case on and pull them out really easy I mean it's so simple it's stupid but one the nice features about it is this as you can probably see I was messing about here it's got a tip feature on by using this uh, wheel here I can, I can uh, move it around a bit let's give them, come down a bit more so you can see it a bit better so it's got a little tipping wheel here but hidden away underneath probably you can see here there's two screws and that means I can tip it this way too only a certain amount but 
really handy when you really like trying to precisely put to align studs up and things like that in a gearbox. Now to pull a gearbox out, <laughs> any fool can do that. But uh, getting it back in is another thing because you've got to line up not only the spline and the clutch, but you've also got to get the bellows in bolts in. And I know full well what it's like to be under a car <laughs> trying to put them bolts in. It ain't fun. So we've got pivoting action this way, pivoting action that way, and it's stable. One of the nice features I also like is this jack handle that you can actually move it all the way around, look. So if you're working at the back of the car, you can still give it that extra little nip without reaching round. And a proper sized knob, no jokes please. A proper sized knob so you can raise and lower it instead of messing about like you do with a jack handle trying to get it off. It's a great idea, I don't know, I don't know why all jacks don't have that. You know, like a big, oh, I can't say a big knob now. Yeah, all, all jacks need a big knob. If your name's Jack, well done. Right, so that's good. What don't I like about it? Uh, the wheels tend to pick up stones. I don't know why, they're, they're metal wheels. But, uh, are they metal? No, I think they're plastic. I think they're plastic wheels. And what happens is with the weight of the jack, if you've got dirt and dust on the floor, it pushes into them and then it uh, blocks them up. So I think that might be a little modification to put some steel wheels on. Something that's not going to pick up the stones. I just noticed that now. But it's a good little tool and it saved my back. It saved my back an awful lot, I must admit. And uh, for a hundred bucks, yeah, 50 quid, it was cheap as chips. I'm sure you can buy these on the you know, like eBay and things like that. I'll have a look when I go upstairs and process this video. And I'll try and find something similar. But just beware, and I think this was made in the States or somewhere like that. But just beware of the hydraulics on them. The seals and the, 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 the fitments of some Chinese jacks, well, well, they're pretty poor. But the actual framework is what you want. Now, just one last thing before I go. There are some transmission jacks that have just a chain that goes over the top. I didn't like that idea in the Land Rover because there wasn't anything flat underneath to pull out the gearbox, if you see what I mean. Like, there's nothing flat underneath. You have to have this little bracket on the top, which is almost perfect balance point for the gearbox. But when you're putting chains on, it's okay if you've got like a flat oil pan, like an automatic transmission but not on a regular gearbox and that's why, again, that's, that's why that's really handy. So, um, yeah, nice little thing, should have, should have had one years ago, but there again, I never, even, I never even had a floor to work up, I always used to work outside. Right, so, that's my jack, hope you like that, that was just a little quick video, little bits and pieces put together on uh, this, this uh, gearbox on this NAS 90. We'll catch you later in the next video. Bye.